this experience of the Delta Force, I think, uh, would give Canon and me personally as a director some new scopes in America. Well, I think, you know, people, with all the publicity that Canon gets, that you get, people forget that you're a fine director, that Operation Thunderbolt yeah. is an extraordinary film. And well, I did a few others. I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you saw The Magician of Lublin, which is the first Bashevi singer, which uh, I love to do, another Bashevi singer. Uh, I did a musical called Casablan in Israel, uh, Highway Queen, you know, about prostitution in Israel, believe it or not. Uh, the thing is that I, I'm a movie maker, not just as a director. I love dealing with other directors, and the fact that I'm a director gives, I give in canon to other directors. They feel happy to work with us because they feel that, let me give you an example. When we came to Hollywood in 79 and started with canon, the first thing we did, we gave a buff title above title titles to directors. Hollywood was not used to it. Even till now, it is always a Zanuck Brown production. It's not a John Frankenheimer film. It's a Zanuck Brown production, which means that Hollywood, the Hollywood system is that the producer makes the movie. He's the ruler, he's the king in the movie making, and he's the creator, which is not true. It's not true. He assembles the movie, the produ producer, as good as he is, he, c he does not really create the movie. A movie is images put together and are telling a story or creating an emotion. And that is done by writers, directors, editors, cameramen, and actors. You understand? And even composers. Those are the creative people who make the movie. And I, f I feel that in France, in Italy, in Europe, and in Israel, it was always like that. Money could not dictate. A budget could, could not dictate a creation of a movie. And I think Hollywood, over the years, became stale with the power that it gave to producers. Because the producers were the people who could assemble a big star, or could assemble a big project together, an important project, get a good director, etc. And they took the credit for making the making of the movie. And when we came with Canon to Hollywood, we came from Europe, we came from Israel, we came from another kind of movie-making world, and which means much bigger freedom, creative freedom, to the movie makers. And that's why you will find that whether it is Altman, whether it is Andrei Konchelovsky or John Cassavetes, or you name them, they're all coming to us now. I mean, the top directors, Babenko just came to us and we're doing a deal with him. We signed Jerry Schatzberg. We are signing a three-picture deal with Friedkin, and uh, <coughs> and many others, and also the stars and the actors and the writers. They are coming to us because they are hungry for this freedom in Hollywood, and uh, it 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 helps us, I believe, to make some better movies. This is a hijack. What we're doing now in the world, which I think is very unique, Canon, once it became powerful, powerful, and I mean powerful, it can dictate a selling of a movie to a, a distributor. That is the power that we have in foreign markets. We came to America to make American movies that could be sold to an independent distributors around the world. Let, let me start really from the beginning. The beginning is that I was raised as a kid on American motion pictures. I was educated, I was Americanized by the cinema, by the American cinema. I lived in a little town called Tiberius. They came, uh, they, they, we had a cinema. I was in this cinema every Saturday night. It was like a bread and butter for me. It was a rule. There was no Saturday night that I was not in the cinema. And then on a Wednesday afternoon when we had the matinee, I was there. And of course, if, if a movie even didn't reach the Saturday night and it came on, on a Tuesday, I was there. And it was, in most, in 99% of the cases, it could not have been but an American movie. B why? The major company system, with the stars of Hollywood, with the feeling that they are giving to the w people of the world another kind of life, to get them out of their dreary li life, that they 
the, the, the century gave us. The cinema was practically controlled by those major companies. And I was educated through my youth, like any other kid, on, in millions of little towns, in millions of little cinemas, by living the American life. I, I, I say that America became an empire due to motion pictures. came to America we said to ourselves that's the way that we can build our place in the cinema of the world which means make an American movie with production values with a good story with call it star system be involved with the the, the, the quality film creators of America and bring it to the world not via the major companies create your own system sell it to the independent and all of a sudden when we came to Cannes, you saw a line of distributors getting a number, like in a barber shop, to meet Yoram and me. Th we became popular there because we brought to them what they could never get. They could never get a good commercial American film to compete for a Saturday night date in their own country. Once we had that power, we could have, you know, be swallowed by Hollywood and became like anybody else. But what we tried to watch, we didn't want that. We brought Europe with us to Hollywood. Creativity, a feeling of doing something better. And then when Taiwan wanted to buy our Death Wish 3, or Death Wish 2, or the first Ninja, you know, or an, a, a kind of an action picture coming from Hollywood, a country like Taiwan or a country like the Philippines, etc., we say to the local distributor, sorry, man, you have to take John Cassavetes first or you don't get Charles Bronson. And we started to sell tomatoes with, you know, cucumbers, as well as peaches, you know? We, st we sold them in packages, and we forced the first Casavitic screening in Taiwan, never before love streams, hmm. never, Casavitic could not, not get a screen, he could not sh <laughs> even be talked about in that country, because all you saw in the cinema there was martial art movies. So you, how can you expect? kids in Taiwan to see a little more intelligent film, uh, something, something better, something with more aspirations, you know, intellectual. But they do have universities. They do have students. They do have people, you do have people who are studying and are eager to see something better, something new. Except that those new films could not get to their cinemas. The distributors were scared. So we forced it. We gave it practically for nothing. And now you know that in Taiwan, they have to see an Altman movie. They have to see Zifarelli. They will see an opera Otello, because otherwise they are not going to get Charlie Bronson.